Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Carmen and this is my podcast about knitting and crocheting and basically my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. As always, I'm coming to you from the Netherlands and as of today, you can find me on Instagram on my new handle at newleafdesigns.nl and also my new website is newleafdesigns.nl um, on Ravelry, I will still be Karamelletje, and you can find the group uh, as New Leaf Podcast group. Yeah, I think. <laughs> um, and on Etsy, I'm also New Leaf Designs NL. Uh, I've done some major rebranding before uh, my website and on my Instagram. I was called Crafty Queens, um, but for some time now, I've been feeling that it is. You know, time for a rebranding, time for a new name, and New Leaf Designs feels more fitting to, you know, what I like and what I do and my designs. So um, I've been very intrigued by plants and plant extracts this past year, um, and I wanted to let that little bit of nature sneak into uh, the new name, hence New Leaf. And as new leaf, you know, turning over a new leaf also means just starting fresh, starting over. And that's really, uh, it gives me so much energy and inspiration and, um, yeah, <laughs> it gives me more inspiration to find my style as I've been kind of struggling to find what my designing style is and I feel I cannot describe it in in just a few words so uh, I hope I'll be able to really find my style. As you can tell I'm still not sure but uh, I hope that with this new name I will start a journey to find my own style and since I don't want to ramble too much at the beginning of the episode I'm not gonna <laughs> say any any more about that um, so today I have quite a lot of finished objects to show you actually um, and I'm delighted to say that I've completed my 12 pairs of socks for the uh, box of socks cal uh, 2017 hosted by Kristen from the Vool and Vine podcast uh, I mean yarn gas and podcast Vool and Vine yarn brand um, and I have them all in my basket right here I love this basket and I even though it's called the box of socks cow, I did not go and uh, find a perfect box because most of these socks I will be gifting at Christmas. Uh, so they will be, you know, mostly gone <laughs> uh, by the end of the year. I'll just go through them quickly uh, and I'll also show you my new additions. So I'll put those aside first. Um, I'll just turn the basket around and start with the ones I did first this year. Actually, I'm not quite sure what the first pair was this year. I think it was this one. These are humongous socks. Um, they are for a size 47 or 46. Uh, EU size and they are made out of a Regia yarn. I believe the colorway was called Metropole and it's a self-patterning yarn and I've paired it with some other uh, Regia. This is also Regia and the, the red as well. That was just a simple vanilla sock with um, a 2x2 two two rib and I have had to do some uh, surgery on one of the heels because I had made one of the heels way too big. It started when, you know, when I was knitting this sock at the beginning of the year, I hadn't knit that many pairs at all. It was maybe my fourth pair I ever knit. Um, and I had just... Um, this was probably my first or second German short row heel. 
and I had read that this heel wasn't so suitable for people with big feet. So what I thought was, okay, well, I'll just increase right before the heel and then I will leave those stitches at the front so that there's some more room here. But then I don't know what happened, but I totally forgot that I was going to do that and I used those stitches for the heel. So what happened was that on one sock, because on the first sock I had just done it plain. And let me see if, yeah, this, uh, I believe this one is the sock that I, or is this one? Mm, I believe it's this one actually. So. On the first sock, I had done no such modification. So on, on the second sock, I just uh, ended up with a way bigger heel uh, and it was super uh, long and pointy and it was insane. And when I had, <laughs> you know, I was really happy when I finished these humongous socks. And then I, I just found out about this mistake and I was like, no. I don't want to knit these again. So um, about a month or two ago, I um, gathered the courage to to cut the heel. Uh, I first inserted a needle here and a needle here, and then uh, in between I unraveled, and then I did um, I knit the last part of the heel, uh, decreasing way more uh, so that the heel would be smaller and kind of doing it as an afterthought heel if you're uh, familiar with that you you will know what I did and um, yeah and I had to kitchener the last couple of stitches and you know it doesn't really look all that different so I'm really pleased with how it turned out Yeah, you can see it. there's some action going on here, but um, a non-knitter will never find that out. So I don't feel too bad about it. I actually, <laughs> I actually think they might be too big, but we'll see about that. Uh, the second pair I knit uh, is for my brother, and I will actually be gifting these next week already because uh, then we will celebrate the Dutch Sinterklaas, um, which is basically the Dutch Santa Claus Sinterklaas. Um, yeah, so that's celebrated on the 5th of December, which is also my mom's birthday, and uh, we just, you know, make a huge celebration out of it, and it's you know, it's more important to us than Christmas, so um, yeah, just a little family tradition. And my brother, he's a really, um, he likes it when things are perfect. Um, so, you know, um, when we were little and when I used to come into his room and then move one thing to the left five inches or five centimeters, I don't know, he would come in and notice that, you know, he's one of those people. So I thought it would be um, fitting to uh, create a matching, perfectly matching pair of socks for him. So I chose the Regia Perfect for this. and. It's really nice and they're totally his colors. He likes red and orange and blue so that is perfect. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with those and I cannot wait to see his reaction to that. Um, the third pair is for one of my boyfriend's sisters and she's a really... Um, well, not really a girly girl, but she likes unicorns and glitter and cats and pink and yeah. So I thought these would be fitting for her. Um, the pattern I used, they are the Rose Hip Socks by The Wool Club. And they have, they have four cables down the front. And I really like these. 
I just, I didn't really, yeah, I didn't enjoy knitting them all that much. But, um, you know, since I had to use the cable needle and I think in the future I would um, go for uh, a cable where I don't really need a cable needle. Um, and I have another issue with these, but that has nothing to do with the pattern. It's just that one is bigger than the other. And I've used the exact same yarn and the exact same needles. And it's a complete mystery. Um, but, you know, I think because I wasn't enjoying this pattern, so I was kind of um, putting it off to work on it. So I knitted these probably start to finish about two, two and a half months. So it could be that my gauge has changed in that time. Yeah, but I don't really beat myself up about it. I mean, they're still gonna be lovely and warm and I hope the recipient will still appreciate it. Uh, so that's three pairs. My fourth pair I knit for myself and, you know, it has been worn a lot, so my apologies. <laughs> they are looking a little bit grubby. And um, around, uh, I, used, I used contrasting colors for the heel and for the toe. And this is um, Schipis Invicta Extra Yarn. And the main color is Marl. It's um, beige and brown, and then here is some lovely dark green. And this is actually um, the socks that I knit during my uh, sock tutorials on YouTube. So if you uh, look into my uh, tutorial playlist, then you'll find the tutorial for these socks. Uh, they are toe up and um, with a German short row heel and um, I use my favorite way of binding off. So if you're interested in that, please go check them out. Uh, I, I love these socks, I love wearing them. They are super warm. Uh, the only thing, well, I'm, I'm super excited about this because I have finally got myself a cleaner. Um, it's not yet delivered, so I'm uh, patiently waiting for that, but uh, I'm excited to get some of this fluff off because um, at the join um, of the contrast color, some of the green fluff is like transferring onto the main color, so there is a little bit of green just fading into the main color and I'd like to just get rid of that. You can see it a little bit here. Just the lines are a little bit faded and blurry and I'd like them to be crisp again. So that's pair four. Pair five is also for me and is the pair I love most, uh, but wear least. <laughs> Since, you know, they are quite out there. Um, this yarn is uh, by Trailing Clouds and it's the London Underground colorway and I love it. This yarn is 75% um, BFL, 25% nylon if I'm correct and it's a 12 striper uh, so it has 12 different colors and I completely adore these socks. I love them. And uh, I increased them a little bit. Um, like where normal socks would end, I would just increase them. And a little bit later, I would increase as well. Um, so um, they come up to my knees now. And I've done afterthought heels on them as I thought that would be really fun. And um, with such bright colors, I was kind of to find uh, another matching color that wasn't already in it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I really like these. That's pair five. Six is also for me. 
<laughs> um, these are the Mercury socks and they look suspiciously tiny, but lace socks stretch uh, quite a lot more than vanilla socks. Um, although they are a bit on the tight side, um, yeah, but I really like these. Uh, the yarn is uh, with the gold Stellina and it's a yarn by Ushitita Fiber Art. Um, you might know Ushitita as she is really popular at the moment and really uh, difficult to get your hands on. Um, yeah, so I love these socks uh, made in her yarn. I am ashamed to say that I've never worn these as I struggle to find a way to, you know, wear uh, hand knit lace socks. I feel like, you know, should I wear them exposed or just in my boots? It's just, yeah, I'm, I'm not comfortable yet to wear these out in the open but then I'm also not comfortable just uh, you know wearing them around the house where they might get a little bit and a little <laughs> where they might get a little bit more wear and tear so yeah haven't worn these yet that's another gift pair and I really like this colorway the yarn is Fildar Phil Folk um, and I believe it was like plumage colorway or something um i really really like these really soft colors yeah kind of a scandinavian feel to it you can you almost cannot see that it has also green in it so it's blue green red yellow and then some browns yeah, I've made these for my boyfriend's mother. Um, yeah, so I'll be gifting these at Christmas. Then uh, in the same yarn, but a different colorway, I've also knit some socks for one of my boyfriend's sisters. Um, it is called Galactique, the colorway. So these are my Galactica socks. Um, yeah and then i used a mini by ushitita for the cuff oh these both were um made with the pattern by the sock matician his uh, toe up gusset heel um recipe and i really like them and uh, they this type of heel is more Mm, fitting for uh, people who need some more space in the instep and around the ankle so they'll be extra nice and comfy uh, I've lost count <laughs> so these are pairs 7 and 8 and I can't remember which one I knit first I think it's this one so this is pair number 9 uh, these are so soft and squishy. Um, the yarn is cheesecake. Well, <laughs> the yarn is Sanda Sanda's Cruffleness yarn, or Cruffleness yarn actually, and it's her spoil base sock in the cheesecake colorway. And I've made a ribbed sock, and it's so soft and squishy. Yeah, and I did my regular toe-up um, German short row heel and um, I did a 3 by one rib and I just continued um, and I didn't make anything special for the cuff. I just did uh, the pattern for, for the cuff as well. So that's my ninth pair. Then my tenth pair which I was actually going to enter into um, the festive suck-along by Amy from Stranded Dye Works, but um, I forgot, so whatever. <laughs> but yeah, these are made with uh, the Arna and Carlos um, design line for Regia, 
and I believe the colorway is called Fall Night. And they have lots of blues and reds and oranges and blacks and gray. And I used a contrasting dark gray mini, uh, not a mini, but um, a solid regia color. And also for the toe. And then for the cuff, I just continued with the main color. Those are also gift socks. Pair number 10. <laughs> and then, well, let me put these away. The last two pairs, which I've actually finished since I last saw you. This one, you've already seen one of them. And I finished the other um, pretty quickly as well. And um, I had to do some darning already on one of the socks uh, because the yarn was going very, very thin there. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks lovely, uh, but the yarn was a little bit thick and thin in places. It's a uh, Drops um, Fabel yarn. I do really like this green color. I still have some left of that. I virtually have none left of the blue. I used two 50 gram balls, so one uh, 50 gram for the blue and one 50 gram for the uh, green. So I'm really happy that I got a nice full length pair of men's socks from a 50 gram ball and, you know, uh, some contrasting yarn. So that's really nice. These are Herm Hermione's everyday socks, but I modified the pattern to be toe up, so I only really used the stitch pattern for that, as it creates a really lovely texture. And it's, it's really addictive to knit, so I think I'm gonna do that for all of my men's socks from now on, that I will choose a pattern sock, because men's socks you know, big ones are a lot of stockinette. If you're just doing a vanilla sock and having a pattern in it was really helpful in getting them done quickly. So that was nice. And lastly, I have finished this pair. I had already knit one sock of this in the beginning of the year and maybe it was actually the very first sock I knit this year uh, but then I don't know what happened I probably got some new yarn and I you know or probably it was the Regia pair effect because I was really intrigued by that um, yeah but then it took me until now to complete the pair by knitting a second one and I was kind of afraid that these would not match in size because you know it's almost a whole year in between them and knowing that or you know my gauges probably changed for the pink socks I showed you earlier so I was really afraid but um, it actually worked out okay uh, so these I did in uh, stockinette, but since it has a pattern, uh, self-patterning yarn, it's also very addictive. So yeah, so these also went very quickly. Uh, the heel on the second one is a little bit bigger than the first one, if you can see. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean... <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> uh, am, I, am I a really bad gift knitter now? I don't know if they will notice, but my dad will probably just wear these around the house. Yeah, he's always complaining about his cold feet, so I think he'll be happy with them. And I have a matching pair for myself, so matching daddy-daughter socks, so he'll love that. <laughs> Yeah, so those are pair 11 and 12 for this year and so I've completed my task for the box of socks. Unfortunately, I haven't yet completed 
all of the gift socks I have to knit. I still have two full pairs to knit. Um, one is also going to be with this yarn, but I'm going to use a red uh, contrasting color for the toe, heel, and uh, cuff, as I fear that I won't have enough. And then I still have one pair of men's socks to knit, but I will knit those with um, all kinds of scrappy yarn. So I think that will be really fun too. And then there's the pair I've been knitting for my boyfriend uh, in the Mademoiselle Uruguay Allegria colorway. So um, no, Allegria yarn in the Otono colorway. Um, and um, yeah, that one has been kind of put on hold because I fear the yarn will stretch a lot. <sighs> yeah, so I've been scared to knit the second one, but I'm also not gonna rip out the first one, so I'll just have to get it over with. <laughs> so those are all of the socks I knit this year, and I'm going to go swiftly onto my next project because this video is already quite long. I'm trying to keep it a little bit shorter this time because last time was really, really extremely long. So I'm pleased to announce that I have done a lot of progress on my Stargazer sweater and just trying to not lose any stitches. So I'm, I'm crocheting a sweater out of uh, Scapius Stardust yarn, which is a sparkly yarn, and Scapius uh, Maxi Sugar Rush. Maxi Sugar Rush. Because, you know, they have three sizes of these, and the 100 gram ball is just called Maxi, I think, and then the 50 gram ball is called Sugar Rush, and the 25 gram is called sweet treat or something so i always get the names mixed up <laughs> but um anywho here is the progress i have made so it's a really boxy sweater as you can see and it has a white boat neck so it, it's really wide uh, and it's got lace panels along the front and back. So now you're actually seeing through two layers. This is just one layer. And it's designed to go on top of a party dress. Uh, it will look really good on a party, party dress with uh, strappy, strappy straps? I don't know thin straps <laughs> and uh, the sleeves are quite fitted although the yarn does stretch a little bit but um, yeah and yeah really happy with this I will well I'm I'm finishing the the neck finishing I guess with just a little edging of the uh, of the cotton yarn and I send that along the front and I still have to do that along the back and then it is finished um, these are for marking the decreases uh, yes very fancy stitch markers um, yeah so in the next couple of weeks I will get those out to my test knitters and test crocheters I mean and to do some finished project bleh, finished finished project finished product pictures anyway pictures um, and write up the pattern I've all I've just I've been really good this time and uh, whenever I completed a section I just wrote down that section uh, so I only have to write down the um, the sleeves now so yeah and I'm thinking of making kits for these as you use two balls of the Scapey Stardust and just one ball of the contrasting cotton yarn so I'm thinking of making kits with them um, yeah let me know what you think 
but I, I don't know, I probably will be able to get them just in time for Christmas, but I'm not sure if it will actually make much sense if I, you know, have the yarn kits available after Christmas. Uh, it's a really sparkly sweater, so yeah, let me know what you think. Um, so I have been working mostly on that and on the two socks I finished. Uh, and I also did a little bit of progress um, on my mystery knit along from Stephen West, although it's just a few rows. But you know, since it's 800 plus stitches, uh, those rows take a while. And because it's brioche, when you finish one row, you don't really see much progress. So yeah, I will spare you. Um, <laughs> I will just show you again next time, probably. And as for the last section of this um, episode, I thought it would be fun to show you some gift tips uh, for the holiday season. I've had some lovely goodies come in the last couple of weeks and um, i just like to share them with you. The first product I'd like to show you is a set of stitch markers by my friend Narissa from MissNariz.com. Here's her lovely business card with some of her designs and here is her logo at the back. Miss Naris and her Instagram handles. Yeah, so um, she has, trying to get them out of the bag, she has made some stitch markers. Um, they can be used for either crochet or knitting. <laughs> and uh, they are, um, I don't know what it is. It's it's some kind of gummy plastic, uh, but it feels really nice. Um, and it's attached to this clasp, so it opens like that. So it's really handy because you can also use it for crochet um, and you can also uh, put it on your knitting needles. Um, you can also use it as a progress keeper if you'd like. Um, and she's got these. Uh, so in blue, red, pink, purple, and lots of colors. And the idea is that they match the Clover Amour hooks. I, I have a set myself but uh, I haven't been able to find them all. They're probably in project bags. So for example, if I am starting a project with the uh, three and a half millimeter hook, uh, which is my purple hook, then I would put the purple um, stitch marker uh, somewhere on the project. And then uh, later, <coughs> You know, I don't always keep my crochet hook with my um, project. So if I come back to the project, or maybe it would be a um, a gauge swatch or something, because I always forget which size hook I used for that. And if I then come back to it and I see that there is the purple stitch marker, then I know immediately that I used my purple crochet hook for that. So that's amazing. So here's the red one and see they all match so it's the brown one and and the blue one well there's actually two uh, types of blue in here let's see it's kind of in the middle but I think this one would match yeah that's nice yeah, so that's a really great idea and um, they're really fun too and you know, if it's on a knitting project then it doesn't really matter which color you're using. Uh, so yeah, they're really fun. Yeah, I can't wait to use these on my next project. I might actually 
clip this on my Stargazer sweater because I'm using my three and a half millimeter hook for that. And yeah, so if you would also like a set of these, be sure to check out Nerissa's uh, Etsy store, which is Miss Nerissa. Uh, on Etsy and then you can find the stitch marker set. I believe they're called Matchy stitch markers or something and um, They're only 950 for the set so you get 10 stitch markers and uh, she ships really quickly um, She's in the Netherlands. So if you're in the Netherlands, you get even more speedy delivery and yeah, so there's still time to order these in time for the holiday season. Thank you, Nerissa, for sending me one of your stitch marker sets. I love them. They are so cute and I will uh, use them for sure on, my, on all of my crochet projects. Amazing. Next up, another Etsy uh, find. Um, this is actually a purchase of mine for my mother. Um, we are doing a kind of a secret Santa thing with um with the dutch set of class so uh i'll be gifting this to her next week and she has always said that she has really wanted a yarn bowl so i have searched and found this lovely yarn bowl she loves flowers especially lavender and um what are these called poppies yeah and especially poppies so I thought this was really fitting uh, this is from a store called Fox, Fox Rosalita on Etsy and the maker is from Latvia uh, the delivery was surprisingly quick um, I think I received mine within two weeks of ordering them uh, and I also got um, a little teapot warmer for myself and they were packaged really, um, really sturdy, really well. Um, and there was a lovely Latvian um, card in there, which was really cute. And um, yeah, so I'm really excited to gift this to my mom next week. Um, the only thing I would like to say that I'm not really fond of is that for the holes right here, uh, there is some, well, the edges are not completely smooth, so I haven't tested it yet, so I don't know if that will be a problem, but uh, I can imagine some yarn getting caught on that. But for, for here, yeah, there are some snaggy bits, probably, possibly, I mean. But for the rest, it is a beautiful yarn bowl, and... I really recommend this store because she has beautiful items. Now, I also have an option for a low budget yarn bowl. Um, this is a, um, it's not a yarn bowl. It is a noodle soup bowl. And you can see it has a dent here and a hole there. And it's so, can you, so you can, Put your chopsticks between there or in there and then let them rest on this side but you know <laughs> whenever I see a product and I think okay how could I use this for yarn <laughs> and I thought well you could have the yarn through here or if you you know if you would like to use the yarn bowl for different projects than just one because if you put it through here you will you know be stuck to the yarn bowl um i believe you know this would work just as fine and i could put a ribbon through here and that would be really cute um this was actually a gift to me uh so i'm not sure where you could get this exact yarn bowl or this exact bowl but um they have a lot of these bowls around um if you look for noodle soup bowls and you know those are typically uh, factory made so not really really expensive so that might be a low budget yarn bowl option 
and I thought I'd share. And also, I've got some lovely yarn to match this bowl. Ooh. <laughs> um, I got a new Escapius Whirl in the mail and it is, oh, it's just amazing. Look at those colors. And um, so this is the is a new variation of the world. This is called the the woolly whirl, and whereas the regular whirl is um, is cotton and acrylic, this is seventy percent cotton and thirty percent wool. So it's all natural fibers. Uh, it's still well let me check yeah so this is one of the uh, regular rolls with 60 percent cotton and 40 percent acrylic and it has well it's the same weight 220 grams and a uh, thousand meters and look at those colors it's amazing and um yeah this one is called kiwi drizzle and um, yeah, so the Wooly Whirl is available in four colors, of which this is one. And uh, it's already available in stores from the 1st of December. So yeah, this will be perfect for a winter make. And I, I think this would make a lovely shawl. Maybe I'll crochet with it again, like I did with my breeze blocks shawl, or maybe I'll knit with it this time. It's just, yeah, I love everything now with, uh, with actual wool in it. It is so much warmer than just cotton or acrylic or linen. Um, wool is, I really notice the warmth and, um, yeah, I really get cold in winter time, so I'll be making something really warm and luscious out of this. And last but not least, I have a very special yarn to show you. And uh, since this yarn is so special, I cannot even put it into words probably properly. See, <laughs> there will be a separate uh, vlog about this yarn because it is really so special. I have to preface this with a story. Um, I might repeat myself in the separate vlog, but I just, I wanted to show you, uh, to tell you. So as you know, I'm a Scapies blogger and I have been for the past two or three years. And it just feels like, it's just a wonderful group of people and, um, they just feel like family to me and every time that I meet uh, one or all of them it just feels like coming home and um, we just we just completely understand each other and that is so lovely to have and um, so Scapius um, they treat us to um, a few days of total word we're, we're just we get totally spoiled every year um they're the bloggers days and last year at bloggers days um they had a really special surprise for us and they said they were coming out with a new yarn and we each of us could choose a colorway like and it would be named after us. So that, you know, at that point we were screaming. <laughs> we were like, oh my God, we get to choose yarn. We have our own yarn. It's amazing, it was the best. So we spent that whole afternoon, uh, uh, lots of uh, paint color samples we, uh, someone got from the hardware store and we would just cut them out and lay them all together and because um, it would be kind of gradient yarn or uh, you know long variegated yarn and um, and we were I was just so excited and um, I chose some blues and uh, because I love blue 
and I chose a very light yellow and a beige. Um, and the blues I chose were kind of light purpley, lavendery. Um, yeah, so so we chose all of our colors and we submitted them. And you know, we don't hear about this anymore for months. And then I think it was last Blogger's Day, so we already had our Blogger's Day this year. It was in August, August or September. And we got to see our Blogger yarns. So it had been nine months since we had chosen the colors. Got to see our own yarns and I can already show you mine. It's, it's this colorway. So uh, I forgot to tell you, the new Scapey's yarn is called, it's called Our Tribe. And it just, uh, it, it just fills me with so much joy because those people, they are really my tribe. <laughs> and yeah, um, I'm sorry, I cannot get my words straight anymore. So uh, here you can see the colors I have chosen. Um, it, there is the yellow and there is the beige over there um and lots of different blues and purples there's some more lavender blue um and the colorway is called new leaf and since this yarn uh was um yeah i think it came out on december 4th so um since this yarn was gonna come out with the name new leaf of course i had to really kickstart my rebranding <laughs> because everyone would be like who is this new leaf person so that's why i had to get this rebranding done really quickly all of a sudden <laughs> and um yes i'm really happy with my colorway and i've already knit um crocheted a swatch with it you can see it here so the color is really um, it changes really gradually, and I really like it. Um, yeah, but um, I will show you lots more in the separate vlog about that later this week or maybe next week. And um, all of the bloggers will have a little special blog post about their yarn um, on their own vlogs. So that's something to look forward to. Okay, so I have one more thing to tell you. I hope I've been able to keep this episode a little bit shorter, but I still have one important thing to tell you, and that is um, the regular viewers know that um, I have been asking my manager if it was possible for me to work part-time starting next year. And um, well, turns out that it was a really difficult decision for them to make because, you know, of course every company prefers full-timers over part-timers. That's just the way it is. But um, in the end, I convinced them that, you know, I really do want to work um, on my dreams as cheesy as that might sound and um, I would really like to devote a whole day a week to designing and you know they know that I don't have a long-term place in that company how much I enjoy my work now is just it's just evident that it's not gonna work for me in another five years, say. So um, in the end, I have convinced them that, you know, to give me a part-time position from um, January. So, uh, and it's the same position, so I will just uh, work one day less each week and I will be able to work one day from home on my designs, on my website, on my social media accounts, um, whatever needs my attention at that time. 
So yeah, I'm just really excited um, that I get to really use my studio as a workplace starting from January. And as this is a really important part of my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer, I thought it would be important to share that with you. And um, I thank you for all of your support. I know some of you have been asking me, you know, if I already <laughs> have some news about it. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for your support. And yeah, I... I just wanted to tell you so um, yeah I'm really happy about that so just a few more weeks and then I will be able to work one day every week from home so ending on a really high note this time um, yeah there's not really much more I can say <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I uh, if, And if this is the last time we speak for the holidays, I wish you a really lovely holiday time with your family. And I hope to see you all again next time. Have a really crafty couple of weeks and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.